grace and peace. Brothers and sisters, this is Minister Disciple Denon Woodhouse at your service. Oh, we're gonna I'm gonna read a few verses from the book of Isaiah. This book was was written, was composed a few hundred years before Christ was even born. <laughs> now, if you're talking about power, prophecy, then this is what I'm talking about. Isaiah, prophetic book about Jesus. Amen. This is so more clarification, more truth that this Jesus, this Messiah, this amazing Savior was no imagination. He was the real, he is the real deal. Hallelujah. Let's read Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1 to 4. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold. Who, who upholds you? Some people say, my money, my car, <laughs> my boo got me, holds me down. <laughs> who, who upholds you? I pray that God would uphold you in the palm of his hands. Keep you in your right mind, your right psyche. Keep, keep your, your energy, your focus, your drive strong and intact. Behold, he's talking about Jesus. Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delights. God delights in Christ. Does God delight in you? Does he? Does he delight in you? I'm not talking about Sunny Delight to drink. <laughs> Does God delight? Are you, are you serving him? Are you worshiping? Are you telling others about him? Are you letting your light shine? Are you reading your Bible? Are you doing any missionary work? Are you telling people about him? Social media. Um, at, um, at the job. Be careful. Get, be careful with that. Are you? In whom my soul delights. God has a soul like us. Oh God, make I want to, Lord, I want to, I want you, I want you, I want to, I want you to be pleased with me, Lord. I want you, to, I want you to delight in me, Lord. It's not like a parent telling you, I, I delight myself in you. You know, most parents tell their kids, I'm sick of you. I, I don't, I hate that you keep on disappointing me. You're nothing, like, or ignoring you. Imagine your parent telling you that they, they delight themselves in you. Ooh. Isn't it? That just, that just, whoo, feels so good. But imagine the God who made your parents. Oh, the, imagine your ultimate parent telling you he delights in you. Do what pleases him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. That, that's what Christ did, right? Yes, what Christ did, and he sent out his, his messengers to tell the Gentiles about, about repentance. Like, let's go, repent, or perish. You're going to be lost. It's no joke. This is a real deal. Verse 2. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. But didn't, 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 Jesus, didn't Jesus preach? What does it mean he will not cause his voice to be heard? Don't forget, Jesus wasn't doing it for the pleased people. He wasn't doing it for the, for the adoration of, of the crowd. He was doing it to please his father. He was doing it to please God. When you do things, who, who are you doing it for? Are you doing it to please people? Are you doing it to please the crowd? Are you, are you doing it for, for money, for fame, for popularity? Or are you doing it for God's glory, for God's will? What is your purpose? What is, what is your intention? Of doing anything for, for the Lord or you what is your purpose of being in service for the Lord what is it what drives you what pushes you right whenever somebody is working out for a particular event or uh, uh, Olympic triathlon um, they're, I know they're, they're doing it 
well, a lot of it is doing it for self glory. They're doing it for um for endorsement deals. They're doing it for recognition, for money, you know, um, opportunities. Right? A lot of time, people do things for their, for their own interests. But Christ did everything for God's glory because he just loved serving people. It wasn't for himself. He came to serve, not to be served. So what do you when you serve the Lord, what are you doing it for? It should be ultimately for his glory. All right? And that was the reason why he he, he lifted up his voice. You see, there's power, um, there's power, a certain level, a certain level of power in your voice as you project it. Um, as you as you think about your tone of voice, your tenor of voice, the the quality of words coming out of your mouth, with your voice, um, there's a sense of, of urgency or not so much of a sense of urgency in your voice. Christ had passion in his voice, urgency in his voice, a quality message in his voice, that people just flock to him, listen to him, because his words they they, they said. And the Bible says, never has a man spoke like this man. Are they saying that about you? Never has anyone spoken like this man, this woman. <laughs> woman. <laughs> See, woman, woman. How, are they saying that about you? Or do you talk like anybody else? Do you behave like anybody else? Right? How, when they, are you lifting your voice to glorify God? Verse 3. Tell me. Now, now let's let's get some deep education going on now. Verse three. This is a deep verse. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. You think about you think about the verse when it says what? Didn't he walk around? Isn't a bruised reed like some sort of stick or something? I, when I first read, that's what I, that's what I figured. Smoking flax shall he not quench. A bruised reed shall not break. Then he walk around. Well, let's look the like definition of reed. A bru bruised reed, R E E D. Reed is uh, any of various tall grasses with slender, often prominently jointed stems that grow especially in wet areas. Okay, the smoke and flax shall he not quench. Um, that's a, a, a slender, erect, annual, like, like, a, like, like a flower, commonly cultivated for its vast fiber and seed. Um, smoke and flax, right? And the flax was a, was a, is a dimly burning wick, right? So, we have definition of a wick. You know, wick, but they, 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 you would use that to, um, for their, for light, for, for candles, a bundle of fibers or a loosely twisted, braided or woven cord, uh, tape or, um, a tube, usually of soft spun cotton threads that by capillary attraction draws out to be burned in a steady supply of the oil, right? Okay. So help them with lighting. They don't they didn't have electricity back in, in those in those ancient days. No, <laughs> they didn't have no Con Edison bill, no P S E G bill for those in the Jersey area, <laughs> for those in New York area. God Edison, they didn't have those. They had a different way of getting light. Now, I try to look at this on a spiritual level. Now, a deep level. This is why to understand the Bible, you have to go on a deeper level. A bruised reed shall he not break, right? And I think. I believe this is what it's talking about. So on a spiritual level, a bruised, bruised reed. What did Christ come to do? Seeking to save that which is lost. A lot of people Christ ministered to were broken people. Blind, deaf, abused, neglected, rejected, full of demons, um, family issues. Right? A bruised reed shall he not break. People were already bruised with sin. People that he went to were already damaged. So Christ wasn't looking to bring more damage. Oh, oh, to the bruised reeds, the people. He didn't want to break them down to some people. They love breaking people down. They love tearing you apart. They love seeing you hurt. They get joy with that. Yeah. So 
that's one of the reasons why I stopped, I stopped watching wrestling. I used to watch wrestling a lot because they took pleasure in others' pain. So, a bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. That's a burning light. Let me see. Let me tell you something. If something, if you if you see a candle, and you need that candle, you're gonna keep the candle on. If you go to a house and the light is on and it's nighttime, you don't, you don't keep the light on. You want to keep paying your, your bill once you have the funds. When, when, when light is, is on, you want to keep the light on. Right? When, when you're going camping and you're on the fire, no, one's in, a, no one in the right mind is going to go and douse out the fire. If, you, if you're using the fire, if it's being made available for a purpose, the smoke and flax shall he not quench. Christ didn't come to extinguish the fire. He wants the fire to burn even brighter. <laughs> he wants it to blaze. Yeah, and the enemy is going around like a firefighter trying to extinguish your fire. <laughs> but you got to say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> I don't care how much you try to hold me down, enemy. You're not taking out this fire, this flame. <laughs> no way. <laughs> the smoke and flax shall he will not quench. He will not get rid of it. He wants to. He wants to propagate it. He wants to. He wants you to be a blaze and a flame. Oh, man. <laughs> he wants you to be. He wants you to be like like those Pokemon that that fires all around them. Those fire fire Pokemon. He wants you to stay ablaze. <laughs> he shall bring forth judgment unto truth. So Christ wants to bring forth judgment on the truth. Tell you about your sins, repent, um, and lead you into a truth. Lead you into a saving relationship with him and into his word. His word, his word. Not just, not, not just to tell you all, if you, if, if you don't repent, you're going to be lost. No, it's to lead you to truth. That's why that's, that's the, the, the judgment message is mixed with truth. They, go, they both go. They both are aligned. Verse 4. He shall not fail. Oh, oh, God. Oh, my God never fails. Nor be discouraged. Oh, God. Till he have set judgment in the earth. And the isos or islands shall wait for his law. Wow. Judgment in the earth. The people are waiting. The people are, well, people are waiting for something better in their lives. Um, people are waiting for financial breakthroughs and uh, better relationships, um, water to drink, um, food to eat. Um, these things are their their needs, their necessities, but they're temporary. Um, we we must not forget that, and ultimately. The Lord is inviting us and exposing us and trying to draw us like a like a fisherman reeling in the fish. That's why he, that's why he told his disciples. He told um um oh, it slipped my slipped my mind. Like I think it was Andrew and Peter, I believe it was. Um, told him I'm, I'm making you fishers of men. So you see how Christ related the actual fishing. Um, on a physical level with physical nourishment to now fishing for men and helping to provide for their spiritual nourishment. Oh! Oh! Ooh! Did you feel that? <laughs> so, God is, has wound us up, taken us out, taken us out, Taking us out of our comfort of comfort land or our comfort waters, so it's comfort waters to unfamiliar land, to unfamiliar territory. He wants to do a mighty work in you, through you. And that's the ultimate thing that we need. His law, his presence, his message. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this is there's a few verses of um, Christ, um, a prophecy about Christ. Um, Jesus is amazing. I, I, he's, he's, the, 
He's amazing. The servant of the Lord. He's uh, the best example ever of living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this prophetic book. We're in 500 to 700 years, about that time before, before Christ was manifest to the world in physical and physical embodiment. We pray, Lord, like Christ, we can be servant leaders. We can seek to speak truth to people and encourage people and not and not put down people, but seek to ignite flames and keep people enriched keep people excited ignited to serve you to honor you and tell others about you oh thank you father root out anything unlike you the pride the jealousy the envy the, envy, the impatience the, the anger the every unwholesome thought and word do what you need to do, Lord. Renew us. Revive us. Transform us. Whatever we set our hands to do, Lord, please infuse your glory in it. Infuse your power in it. Infuse your spirit in it. Because, God, if we need you, we adore you. We plead for your spirit. We plead for your presence. We are feeding our spirit, Lord. This flesh will corrode and go away. Oh, God. But the spirit man is being renewed day by day. Oh, God, hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you and we love you. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace and peace be upon you, my brothers, my sisters, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. This is minister, disciple of our Lord, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the non what house at your service. Grace and peace be upon you and your families. I love you. And your Heavenly Father loves you the most and the deepest. Amen.